Ideas, sentiments, emotions, and beliefs possess in crowds a contagious power as intense as that of microbes. Now, these aren't my words, no, I'm nowhere near that profound, but please stay. Um, Gustave Le Bon, the French polymath, had this to say, hinting at the epidemic spread of narratives. You see, like an actual epidemic, social epidemics, that is, the epidemic of ideas, develop in fascinating ways. As a narrative spreads, excitement builds across different groups. Some narratives, like some mutations, well, they subside, they melt away into the background, but others, they balloon, they exponentially grow until some sort of clarifying moment is met within public discourse. Either then, the excitement fades away, or there's some sort of collapse in public deliberation. But this isn't a talk concerning epidemics. This is a talk concerning AI, geopolitics, and the future of humanity. What do epidemics, what do narratives have to do with this? If the future is uncertain, if it's radically uncertain, the narratives are what we have to cope. And this is what you get with the idea of the supposed artificial intelligence arms race. A leading anxiety in both of the technology and foreign policy spheres today is that of China's supposed edge in the AI arms race. You see, the usual narrative goes something like this. Without the constraints on data collection that liberal democracies pose or impose, and the ability of the Chinese to direct resource allocation in a much more efficient manner, the ability of the Chinese to command the future of technological organization would far outstrip the West. After all, AI models, they're hungry for more and more data. This is how they make representations of the world, go out and make decisions in an explainable manner. But still, the West insists on privacy. And this, to many, is a luxury that we cannot afford, as whoever achieves superhuman or transformative AI first, they're going to be able to have a strategic edge. They're going to be able to shape technology and society in their image or so says the narrative. Because this is a highly bleak, yet highly compelling story. And one that plays out, that unfolds in many substantive ways. The most obvious lens to consider how these narratives take hold is in the military. In August of 2020, the US Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, otherwise known as DARPA, organized a virtual dogfighting tournament. Now, before anyone calls RSPCA here or anything like that, a dogfighting tournament is actually an aerial battle between pilots. This one took place virtually, and not only were human pilots taking part, but AI systems were taking part too. And you probably know where this story is going, right? The top AI system actually beat the top human pilot 5-0. But in my eyes, this isn't the most interesting part of the story of the experiment. On top of this, the winning AI used hyper-aggressive tactics, flying very close to its opponent with an even lower regard for the survival of its own plane. Not only is this sort of aggression worrying, it's fundamentally baked into a narrative which accepts that if you want to dominate the technologies of tomorrow, you need to use the military arena as a conduit. And this obviously bakes in a certain approach to developing AI technologies, one that is fundamentally conflict-laden. Another central theme is that of economic nationalism. Every week, the Financial Times will cover a story about the fractious cross-border politics of mergers and acquisition investment into frontier-shifting technologies. Last week, ARM was the center of their attention, the semiconductor giant based in Britain is being investigated by the Competition and Markets Authority for being acquired by US tech giant NVIDIA. This week, similar stories are unfolding in the cryptocurrency space. Regardless of the different players, regardless of the different institutions, the story playing out is the same. Every country wants to build their own AI champions. 
And if we accept this narrative, the alarming assumption that A, these technologies will be transformative, and B, that those wishing to secure these transformative technologies are wanting to use them for a strategic edge, then we face a bunch of fundamental risks. Nation states will obviously and understandably freak out when foreign assets try and get a slice of their own cake. So, if countries worldwide attempt to build their own AI champions, be it in the military or economic sphere, then there are these profound risks that we face. And in this sense, AI should be viewed just as much as a social ideology as it is a technology. But I'm not concerned about the ideas of autonomous drones being haywire or killer robots, although those are obviously existential risks that we need to be concerned with. The primary risk, something which I think is given seldom enough attention, is that of the locking in of bad values. Now, what do I mean by this? In my eyes, the incentive structures for both governments and the private sector make this locking in system much more likely. Governments face a short-term political cycle which often rewards aggressive yet vacuous foreign policy posturing in order to appease a home base. Meanwhile, the private sector fares no better. The short-term incentives this time are economic imperatives, requiring data at this very instant, right now. And this means, in both the government and private arena, that there's a rush. A rush to build your next transformer model a rush to build your next Tesla. And in a race where the narrative is essentially to kill or be killed, then you're going to cut a few corners. And this brings us to the crux of this talk, of bad values and the alignment problem. The alignment problem is fundamentally the problem of building powerful AI systems which are aligned with their operators. An algorithmic function, which many AI systems will operate on, has to optimize for something. The big question then is, what should it optimize for? And I see it as being decomposed into two parts, this challenge. You first got the technical challenge. How do you technically make sure that this optimization works from a computational perspective? But then there's also the moral, the normative question of what should these values actually be? and whose values matter most for a given AI system. Now, you don't need to have taken any classes in computer science or moral philosophy or political theory to recognize that these are fundamental questions and ones that we don't have a clear-cut answer to. But if we rush things out of fear of the narrative, then there's a risk that putting the genie back in the bottle will prove incredibly difficult. According to a new prediction model from Open Philanthropy, the research group, AI models as transformative as the Industrial Revolution will be generated by the 2050s. What this means is that in the next 30 years, once such a system becomes widely disseminated amongst our economy and society, fixing any problematic foundational elements with these systems will be akin to trying to deal with our crisis in democracy. And, and this worry is compounded when you consider the lack of people working on AI alignment. Fewer than 100 researchers are working on AI alignment in seven leading AI organizations. So if transformational AI could come about in the next 30 years, do we honestly think that we have enough people focused on ensuring that it goes well for humanity? This is the equivalent of having only 100 people in the world working on, the, on ensuring that there's carbon capture technology available by 2050s. It's building a house for your family without the scaffolding. And worse still, when you consider the geographic concentration of these alignment-based firms, you'll have heard of some of them. Some of them are based out of London, Oxford and Cambridge and Silicon Valley. Do we honestly think that this small cadre of firms is going to be able to represent the preferences and values of cultures and communities worldwide? So, you have a problem where the fear of geopolitical AI supremacy heightens the risk of technological tensions, which encourages the cutting of corners, 
that could impact society for literally thousands of years. Moreover, to make matters worse, you could fit all of the people working on ensuring that this goes well for society in this room. Sounds pretty rough, doesn't it? Now, there are two ways of approaching to dealing with this problem. The first is to think about the narrative, to reshape it in a way that doesn't heighten conflict. And here I'm actually optimistic for a new way of understanding AI. You'll have heard of the Turing test. This is a modern form of assessing, or, or an outdated perhaps, form of assessing machine intelligence that often rewards the idea of conflict and substitution. It says, if I want to be seen as intelligent, I need to be able to imitate a human. I need to be able to trick a human on the other end of the line to think that they're dealing with a human rather than a machine. But it doesn't have to be this way. Intelligence is fundamentally social. It's derived from the goals of those around you. And what is seen as intelligent in one group is very different to what's seen as intelligent in another group. I mean, do we honestly think if, if aliens exist and we got all in this room taken up in a UFO, went billions of light years across the galaxy, got dropped in another civilization, that we'd be seen as intelligent? It doesn't strike me that we would be because the knowledge, everything that we've built, our assets, it would have nothing to do. It wouldn't be relevant to the civilization that is on the other side of the universe. So this to me offers a new way of thinking about intelligence, one that's a social endeavor, one that requires cooperation rather than conflict. And ultimately, to deal with the global challenges of today, we need global cooperation. The other way around this, or a two-pronged approach if you like, is to fix the alignment problem. Now, I'm incredibly uncertain about the future of emerging technologies, and in particular AI, uh, but the work of Hilary Greaves and Brian Christian have expanded on the AI alignment problem in much more detail than I could ever comprehend of doing so. And if you've been interested in this talk, I'd thoroughly recommend checking them out. But these narratives that drive self-fulfilling prophecies are not inevitable. But for things to change, to reimagine an alternative way of governing emerging technologies, we have to start telling new stories ourselves. Thank you very much.